Greetings out there in YouTube land and welcome to the House of Jonfeld. In this video, I will be covering the career of four-time Oscar winner Milena Cananero. She was born in Turin, Italy and raised in Genoa. She studied art and design in college before moving to England to finish her studies. It was in England where she crossed paths with Stanley Kubrick and he would hire her to design costumes on his film A Clockwork Orange. Based on the book by Anthony Burgess, it told the story of Alex DeLarge and the sadistic leader of his gang of droogs. Melina was ecstatic about working on A Clockwork Orange as she loved the novel. Kubrick told her he didn't want science fiction and the film was ambiguous. It's now and tomorrow. She worked with production designer John Barry scouting locations. Kubrick gave Milena his Nikon camera with a wide-angle lens and she took tons of photos around London. She was inspired by the skinhead gangs for the Droog costumes. Kubrick explained to her that movies are mostly close-ups and from then on Milena always started at the head designing the hair and makeup. For Alex, she came up with the bowler and the fake eyelash with white shirt, white pants, suspenders, and a codpiece, and a cane. A Clockwork Orange opened to good business and mixed reviews. It was very controversial for its graphic violence and sexuality, and received four Oscar nominations. It established Milena as a professional costume designer. Barry Lyndon was the next Kubrick Cananero collaboration, and it was based on the book by William Makepeace Thackeray. Stanley said he didn't want the costumes to look like wardrobe, and he wanted beautiful fabrics that moved. Co-designed with Ulla Britt Soderlund, Kubrick had seen the immigrants and the new land and was impressed with Soderlund's work, making the 19th century clothes look aged and threadbare, and immediately hired her. The two ladies began an intense research that involved visiting museums, particularly the Victoria and Albert Museum for 18th century patterns. Cananero and Sauterland studied 18th century paintings, primarily the works of Thomas Gainsbourg. They obtained laces and trimmings from auctions and collectors. Milena visited several costume houses and was unsatisfied by their stock of 18th century clothing and decided that everything had to be made. For their wardrobe department, an unused aircraft factory was converted into a costume workshop and students from the best costume design schools, the best tailors, cutters, and milliners were hired to make the outfits. The results were some of the most beautiful and authentic 18th century finery ever committed to film. Special lenses were used to shoot scenes that were lit only by candlelight. One urban myth that has surrounded the film was real 18th century clothes were used which would have been impossible as they would have been too delicate to withstand the rigors of a film shoot. However, some authentic items were used in scenes that didn't require a lot of action, making sure the fragile items wouldn't be damaged. Barry Lyndon was a success when released and received several Oscar nominations including costume design for both ladies. Soderlund was the only one in attendance at the ceremony and she came dressed in 18th century regalia with a tricorn hat, coat, vest, and jabot when she accepted the Oscar on behalf of herself and Milena. At the time, Elena was visiting India and had no idea that the Academy Awards were going on. So one can imagine her reaction when she returned home and found a package from the Academy with an Oscar in it. Milena's next film was Midnight Express, and it was a sharp contrast from the elegant items of Barry Lyndon. It was based on the book of the same name about Billy Hayes' incarceration at a brutal Turkish prison for drug smuggling. 
She designed gritty prison clothes and uniforms. For her research, Milena played tourist and took many photos around Istanbul and the airport for costume and production design purposes. The film was a hit commercially and critically, and it single-handedly killed the Turkish tourism industry. Kubrick once again recruited Milena to design his adaptation of Stephen King's classic horror novel, The Shining. She came up with casual and practical clothes for the cast. Memorable items include Danny's Apollo 11 sweater, which is the subject of many conspiracy theories, Jack's burgundy coat and flannel shirt, the Grady twins' powder blue party dresses, and Wendy's blue and red jumper dress and tan corduroy overalls, green plaid shirt, and blue terry cloth bathrobe. The Shining was a loose adaptation of King's novel, and Kubrick filled the film with frightening images of blood pouring out of elevators, ghosts manifesting themselves in the hotel, and the manuscript Jack has been working on. The film did good business when released, but received mixed reviews from critics. Since its release, The Shining has become a horror classic. Chariots of Fire, set in 1924, tells the story of two runners, Eric Liddell and Harold Abrahams, one Christian and the other Jewish. Milena created an assortment of men's suits made from English tweeds and wools and the track uniforms of that era. Milena prefers designing menswear, and this film allowed her to do this. She did design several elegant ladies' items for Alice Cree's character, Sybil Gordon, such as this black and white dress and long jacket when she meets Harold at the train station. Chariots of Fire was a hit and earned seven Oscar nominations, winning four for Best Picture, Script, Vangela's memorable score, and Milena's costumes. This time, she attended the ceremony dressed in a very sharp white tuxedo and gave a gracious speech acknowledging the other designers. The Cotton Club was the first of several collaborations between Cannonero and Francis Ford Coppola, and the one she had the most fun on. It was set in the late 20s and early 30s, and Milena had used a lot of her own personal collection when costuming the picture, particularly the hats as those played a big part in her design aesthetic. To this day, she still incorporates hats in her work. The exhaustive research Milena did was a labor of love, and she created a very glamorous wardrobe. The Cotton Club became notorious for all the controversy that went on behind the scenes. The film didn't do well at the box office and critics were not kind. However, Milena's work did receive acclaim and she won the BAFTA Award for Best Costume Design. Out of Africa is a personal favorite of Milena's. Based on the book by Karen Blixen, written under her pen name, Isaac Dennison, it told the story of Blixen's years living in Kenya from 1914 to 1931. This picture proved to be a challenge to Milena as she worked closely with production designer Stephen Grimes as he shared with her his sketches and design. Their color scheme was shades of tan, off-white, and cream. They even joked that the movie was called The African Cream. <laughs> the costumes were simple, yet detailed and textured. One outfit that stands out is Blixen's wedding gown, which consisted of a white tailored suit and hat. And here are some examples of clothes from that era. Out of Africa cleaned up during award season and won Best Picture. Milena also received a nomination, but lost to Amy Vada's feudal Japanese clothes in Ron. Written by Charles Bukowski, Barfly was an autobiographical story based on Bukowski's own life. It told the story of a destitute alcoholic named Harry Chinaski, who works menial jobs and writes poetry and short stories as solace from his grim life. He meets fellow alcoholic Wanda and they begin a love affair. Milena dressed the actors in worn-down, grimy, and filthy-looking clothes. 
Tucker, the man in his dream, was another feather in the Cannonero Coppola collaboration hat that told the story of Preston Tucker, an innovative auto designer and engineer who attempted to produce the 1948 Tucker sedan. Melanie used magazine advertisements and 40s movies as inspiration for her designs. She created tailored uh, tailored double-breasted suits and fedoras for the men and broad-shouldered power suits for the women. In 1990, Chester Gould's comic strip Dick Tracy was given the Hollywood treatment, directed and starring Warren Beatty in the title role. Milena worked closely with production designer Richard Silbert and, Vit and Vittorio Storaro, the cinematographer, and they all worked with a ten-color color scheme. This was one of the rare instances where the costumes, set, and camera folks all worked in sync. The costumes in the movie and the colors in the costumes in the movie are very bright and bold, with Dick Tracy's yellow trench coat and fedora, Tess Trueheart's heart-shaped hat, and the kids' cap and knickerbockers. Al Pacino was cast as Big Boy Caprice, and it was in the fitting room where Al created his characterization. He improvised with costumes and props while Milena filmed him with her video camera as he invented the character right in front of the wardrobe crew. Madonna was cast as femme fatale Breathless Mahoney, and Milena was impressed with Madonna's dedication to building her character. The only major snag Milena had was Mahoney's silver lame evening gown that had to be dyed a darker shade of gray. After the dyeing process was done, the dress had become rubbery and had to be taken in several times. After that, Milena decided she wouldn't be dyeing lame fabric anymore. Dick Tracy was released to great reviews and a hit at the box office. Milena received another Oscar nomination, but lost to Franca Scorchiapino's 17th century duds from Cyrano de Bergerac. This, that same year, she reteamed with Coppola to design The Godfather Part II, and it was her idea to have Al Pacino in a salt and pepper crew cut, as she believed that the hair also made the character. Milena always makes sure that the hair and makeup crew are on the same level as she is. The Godfather Part Three featured some of Milena's most elegant gowns that were all enhanced by Gordon Willis's dark Caravaggio lighting. Single White Female was Milena's debut as production designer. It told the story of Allie who takes in Hetty as a roommate in her large studio loft at the Ansonia. Hetty first comes across as mousy and shy, but beneath that facade is a raging psychopath. Milena also designed costumes, but because of union rules that a costume designer cannot be credited with both production and costume design, she went uncredited with the costumes. The interiors of Allie's apartment are almost gothic with the high walls and large windows. Another noteworthy set is the S&M Club all decked out in kinky decor. Sofia Coppola and Milena Cannonero first worked uh, together on The Cotton Club and later The Godfather Part Three. When Coppola started production on Marie Antoinette, she immediately hired Milena to design costumes. Milena or Coppola gave Milena a box of pastel-colored macaroons from La Dure and told her to use it for her color scheme. Milena and her assistants created the gowns, hats, suits, fans, and prop costume pieces. Ten rental houses were also employed, and the wardrobe unit had seven transport drivers. Shoes were made by Manolo Blahnik and Pompey, and hundreds of wigs and hair pieces were made by Rocchetti and Rocchetti. A very clever scene included a pair of lavender Converse sneakers among the 18th century shoes in the I Want Candy montage. This was to symbolize that Marie was still a teenager. The film was a modest success and netted another Oscar for Milena. The Grand Budapest Hotel was the third collaboration with director Wes Anderson as they had previously worked together on The Life Aquatic and The Darl Geeling Limited. 
Most of Anderson's movies have rich color schemes, and this was the case with Grand Budapest. The film was set in the 1930s, and Malena created a very flamboyant version of that era. Malena used bold purples for the hotel uniforms and red and gold trimmings. She used reds and golds for Tilda Swinton's Madame D character, dressing her in the finest gowns for the 84-year-old dowager. The Grand Budapest Hotel became a smash hit, making $174 million, and that is a lot for an independent art film. It received nine Oscar nominations, winning four, including one for Milena, and this was her fourth win. She graciously thanked Anderson for his marvelous collaboration. They followed this up with The French Dispatch, a film told in five parts during the 60s and 70s, and Milena clearly had a great time coming up with the bold designs of each era. Other noteworthy films of hers are Damage, Love Affair, Death and the Maiden, Bullworth, Titus, Affair of the Necklace, Solaris, Evie Chire, and The Wolfman. Melina has always had an affinity for great directors, and that is usually how she chooses her films. Stanley Kubrick, Francis Ford Coppola, and Wes Anderson are prime examples. Currently, she is working on Coppola's dream project, Megalopolis, and from these behind-the-scene photos, her creativity, her creativity is thriving. She has been a mentor to talented artists like Eduardo Castro, Judiana Makovsky, Louise Frogley, Joanna Johnston, and Daniel Orlandi, who all became great designers in their own right. The list of awards Milena has won include her four Oscars, three BAFTAs, three Guild Awards, a David Di Donatello Award, Italy's Oscar, a Golden Satellite, and a Golden Bear from the Berlin Film Festival for Lifetime Achievement. She married actor Marshall Bell in 1980, and they are still together, making it one of those rare Hollywood marriages that has lasted. Milena is a lady who never sleeps, and she is a night owl, always reading and researching. There are simply not enough hours in the day or night for her. She isn't, if she isn't working on a movie or attending an award show, she is going to the movies, her favorite thing to do as movies are her passion. This passion is evident in her work, and she has no plans to retire anytime soon. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and that's the way the cow ate the cabbage.